Hi, this is Natalie with the Vintage Cross Stitch Niche with a, another exciting video. Yay! Anyway, um, I was going to make this video after I announced the winner of the contest, which I'm picking tomorrow, Wednesday. Today is Tuesday, I guess it's the 25th of June. And but I have all this stuff sitting on my, on my dining room table, ready to show you, and I could not resist. So, just got home from work wearing my work outfit. Uh, I made myself a treat. It's a mixed drink in my vintage cup, just to show you. In keeping with the vintage theme. This actually has recipes how to make different drinks, including an Alexander, Martini, Tom Collins, Bacardi, Manhattan, Whiskey Sour, and Daiquiri. I do remember drinking Whiskey Sours when I was 13 years old at a child in my, that I grew up with had a, a bar mitzvah and we were all drinking, well, anyway, that's a long time ago. <laughs> um, so what do we have to show you? I want to show you um, how we're doing on Louisa Snow. I'm going to undo this. Remember I use, I use the roller frame. And roller frames don't take long to undo. And uh, I love keeping my projects on the dowels. And Nicola Parkman in her Hands Across the Sea video from which she 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 uh, she did from the attic in Arizona showed this really nice project holder bag thing made a beautiful fabric that had a dowel and you actually roll your project up. I called the attic the attic, not the attic, haha, <laughs> the attic, and I ordered two of them, which I will show you. But anyway, we're taking these apart. Make sure, so you don't lose these nuts that you put them on your, on the ends, and not in use, and if you do, they're standard wing nuts, so you can order them. But I'm just taking this apart so I can show you Louisa, Louisa Snow. Anyway, I hope Nicola Parkman uh, watches my video. There are a few others that are watching my video, other Foss tubers, which I find sort of an honor. These are much more popular and bigger than me, so I'm like, wow, that's cool. Anyway, here's the, the top of Louisa Snow. It's coming out really nice. I cannot wait to do the colored, the colors which are down in this area, but I think I am very pleased. As you can see, there's not much room for the ends. The ends are a little frayed, that's okay. I did put no fray on them and they will not fray anymore because no fray, or no fray, I forgot the name of it, but it's a no fray product. It's like a little gel you put on the outside, keeps it really nice, just to show you. And uh, what's gonna be, the way this is gonna be mounted is like the original sampler, which is going to be hemmed on the sides and just sort of put put on uh, another piece of linen, probably, and actually under glass. Sort of mounted like I mounted that one. That one's not on linen. That one is on a, uh, I say that one, I'm going to say, this is just a small sampler, the, the little rag sampler uh, by Kitten Stitcher. And uh, as you can see, they hemmed it and just mounted it on actually a piece of, uh, just a piece of uh, whatever this is, cardboard of some sort. But uh, I actually, this one does not have a hem showing, it's hemmed under. I'd like my hem to actually show on this. To look like as if it were done by hand. I might even do it by hand. I want it to look like the original and then we'll, we'll really hem it. So anyway, this is Louisa, or Louisa, Louisa Snow on, of course, my own very vintage fabric. So let's put this away. Let's 
Roxy, barking at a squirrel, probably. Okay, so we have that. Um, I'm, I've been working on this feet all week, so that is really it since my last one. I, I do want to, I have also going is a few others, uh, a few other, two other samplers that I started. And I also have the Blackburn Designs uh, Strawberry Fields that I'm working on. That one I have not touched since my trip, I, though I did a big, nice chunk of it on my trip. I have to put it on the dowel so I can use the roller frame. Um, this is a small that I may be starting, and the reason I, I might start it is because sometimes I need a small thing in between to feel like I'm finishing something. Um, this one is Lucy Beam Love and Stitches All Hallows Eve Heart. I've showed you this before. Pretty darn nice, isn't it pretty? Done on Anubis by Under the Sea Fabrics. Threads, uh, and I actually have a beautiful fabric to show you. This one is called Halloween's Night by E Designs. Can you see it? What do you see this fabric? It's beyond nice. I think it's pretty darn close. And I actually pulled the threads for it. Very simple, grasshopper. Fragrant cloves and burnt orange. Just three threads. It looks like it needs a fourth. Where is the fourth? Hmm. I need black crow. I, wow, I'm missing some. Black crow, tomato, harvest moon, and raven. I do have them. I have them somewhere. I just have to, I probably stole them to do something else with. But anyway, I think you get the idea. So. I have to go get the threads for this. I have to pull them. I, I definitely have them, all those threads somewhere. I'm sure of it. I know I have tomato. I was looking at it the other day and saying, why did I buy this? So, All Hallows Eve Heart on E Designs. Halloween's Eve. It's going to be real nice. I have another project to show you. I know it's probably uncouth to walk away while you're filming, but somebody commented that life happens, so. I worked all day, it's not like I sat here for hours preparing for this video, <laughs> but I have had this stuff on my table. I showed you this last time, it's with Thy Needle and Thread, it's called Soar. Well, I don't know if I showed you this last time, but I'm pretty sure I showed you this. Well, anyway, I was looking for the fabric and I finally found it. The fabric is called Carbon Melange. It is the perfect fabric for this. It's not too black and it's not too gray. And it's sort of variegated and irregular, but it's irregularly irregular and it's dark, which is what I wanted. So if you can just imagine this pattern on this fabric with all of this DMC I usually it's not that I don't like DMC it's just that I like over dyed threads better and I love love silk too but anyway there's so many colors I and it's not big I figured I'd just do it as pictured in DMC I think Excuse me, it's going to be fabulous, I really think. Anyway, so that's another project I'm going to be starting because now that I found the fa finally found the fabric, I could not find it. Finally found the fabric when I was organizing my fabric. <laughs> this is going to be started soon, so very excited about that. Uh, Let's talk about a new, um, a new thing. This is called Turkey Time by Lizzie Kate. So cute. I'm gonna make a little, probably an ornament or a pillow. This is a companion piece with uh, the pair of pilgrims, which I just, I've had. I love these. Now, the pair of pilgrims, I had two, so I just sold one. <laughs> It sold, I couldn't sell it on my own page, but I sold it, I actually canceled it off of my page and I put it on 
L and S D stash, L and T D stash, anyway, it sold. So I was happy that somebody wanted it because I had two of these. But this is the other one, which I thought was cute. And it actually came with some 28 count tumbleweed fabric. So that was nice to buy this used chart, but it actually came with the fabric. I was excited. I haven't even pulled this out. So tumbleweed apparently must be, it's white shelf because it's stiff or permanent. It's a little on the thin side, but that's okay. So obviously this must be pretty small. I don't know what they bought it for. I think I'm gonna do the turkey tie, which is the little, the uh, turkey, obviously. <laughs> and again, this one I have to do. I don't, I'm not sorting this right away, but again, it's on the back burner. I have a lot of projects I certainly could do. Um, I will be finishing my projects, no worries. Um, I think I only have one more chart to show you. I am trying not to buy charts. I am desperately trying, ouch, not to try chart, not to buy charts because I have too many and uh, I really want to finish. I do finish my stuff. In fact, I have a finish to show you. It's a small finish, but finish nonetheless. And this, this one I did buy is Homespun Elegance Purely Sampler Collection, Peace to One and All. I just liked it. It's not very big. And there was just something about it that I, I liked. And she has, let's see, she has DMC, Anchor, and Fibers used a bunch of it says Crescent Colors, which is now Classic Color Works, and Weeks Dye Works, and DMC, a whole bunch of stuff she's using. What kind of... She did this on 30 Count Old Mill Java, which you can still get. It's r, r Old Mill Java. I love 30 Count Linen. I think it's a little finer than 28 Count, but it's easy to work on like 28 counts so I really do and r, r is not going to be making 30 count anymore so what's out there is out there I'm gonna try not to spill this so so Sandra Sullivan unfortunately I like her her Facebook page I'm friends with her on Facebook and I look at all her beautiful finishes and then I fall in love with so many of them. This is from 2013, which is not that long ago. But once again, peace to one and all. And it says purely sampler collection. I don't know if this is a reproduction or her own design. My feeling is it's probably her own design, but it's nice. I just liked it. There was something about it. Okay, what else do I have to show you? Oh, quite a bit. Oh, as usual. All right, so I, in general, don't buy sampler bags. Sampler bags, I mean project bags. I don't, because I like to see what's inside my project. Before I show this to you, I usually get the mesh ones. And I like the mesh ones. And I've ordered some from the attic, which are roll ones, which I'm very happy with. But uh, Garan Toten bags. Gary stitches with me, or I should say I stitch with him because I don't, I'm not there all the time. Like, he's there much more than me. Over at the Cross Stitch Cupboard in Wilton Manors, Florida. And I have watched him go, him and his uh, partner, Ron, uh, go, that's why it's Ron, Gary and Ron, uh, go from a fledgling business to a booming business. The quality of their bags, and they also make Q-snap covers, I have begged them to make roll of frame covers of some sort, and they won't do it, he's too busy, but that's okay. The quality is really beautiful like just handmade 
beautiful fabrics, uh, well sewn. Uh, you know, he's very talented. I, I wish I could sew like this. So anyway, I think it is a good idea for, for taking these somewhere, for going somewhere to, to, to actually have some of these. And if the ones I do I am interested in are the ones that are for the holidays, because I don't know what's in there. I'll be like, oh wow, that's one of my Halloween projects. So it doesn't matter which one it is. If I feel like doing Halloween, I'll take it. When I saw this fabric, I had to have it. So look at the fabric. It's vintage style. It's vintage cats. It's, look at the kits. And look at the quality of the bag. Inside, he's got a different fabric. And it's just so well made that I, I was very impressed. He's got a nice little new thing. A spider. I saw the fabric and I said, okay, it's time for me to buy one. I did ask for vintage style fabrics and apparently they must have listened to me and bought them or they just bought them. Um, I also ordered a Downton Abbey one, which is not made yet. Um, I'm a huge Downton Abbey fan. Now, if you've never watched Downton Abbey, you are missing out on an absolutely wonderful, wonderful slice of Victoria, I'm gonna say. Actually, it takes part during Edwardian times, but, which is early 1900s rather than late 1800s. But it's so superbly acted. The storyline is, is fascinating. The characters are wonderful. It's on uh, Amazon Prime, so you can watch the whole thing. You can binge watch it. I've actually watched them all more than once. There's a movie coming out, and I'm very excited. But that's enough of me selling Downton Abbey. Uh, I love it. When I saw the Downton Abbey fabric, I had to say, okay, <laughs> i got to get that. I have Downton Abbey uh, ornaments for my Christmas tree our Christmas tree. If somebody had a great cross stitch that was Downton Abbey, I would have to do it. I have not seen one, by the way, so. And I would imagine designing one is probably, prob is most likely, I should say, problematic because of, uh, you know, you have to contact Masterpiece Theater, you probably have to pay them to use the Downton Abbey name and the characters and so forth. But boy, would I love a Downton Abbey sampler of some sort. It would be fabulous. Okay, I have more stuff to show you. Shall I show you the hard stuff or the soft stuff? How about starting off with the uh, what what I'm giving away for the giveaway. Let me go get that. Hold on. It's on my vintage tray. I um, I love this tray. It is a real old tray made. It's it, see how you know you see how distressed it is. If you go to to Hobby Lobby, they'll have trays like this with fake distressing made in China. This one, who knows where it was made, but it's got the real deal. It had a blue edge to it that is rusted in places. And anyway, I love it. But just to show you, this is the giveaway. And the giveaway is because we have 550 members on our site, the vintage cross stitch niche. This is the cup. This cup is Hampton Court by Soho Pottery in England. So you get the cup. You make a pin cushion in the cup. There are a million, not a million, but there are a few YouTube videos which show you how to do it. You get, this is R&R 30 count Garden State Java. It is a nice size piece. It is lovely variegated linen if you've never seen it. 
It's such a pretty color. Garden State must stand for green, and the Java is the nice browns that it has in it. So you get that. You get two nice pieces of vintage style fabric for what you're going to do with them. I don't know. Make maybe a little uh, something for your cushion to sit on. I don't know, but I figured that. You get these really old buttons, and all of these buttons are, are antique or vintage. This I, I will tell you because I collect vintage antique buttons. I hope you can see them. <laughs> vintage antique buttons. You get a stick pin to stick in your cushion. You get all of this floss, and this is all just beautiful floss. And this one is, let's see, Indian Summer I put in here. I put in, whoop. I put in straw. And these are not whole flosses, they're pieces, they're dark chocolate. So maybe I just used a little tiny bit and I put it aside just for kits. This one is Tin Bucket. And this is a green floss. Actually, there's quite a bit here. It's probably a full one, but it's a mystery, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm not labeled. And even one more. Let's see, this is Light Khaki. So you get a real whole bunch about it. This is vintage trim. I don't think it's handmade, but it is not new. It's not current. It's, it's got some age to it. Very pretty. You get a real vintage napkin, and this one is, I hope you can see, it's got some, like a flower in it. And this one's actually got a little stain on it, which I think is, makes it even more better. <laughs> it's in a spot you can't see. And then you get this antique postcard in the, again, the rose theme. And this one is a joyous birthday, and this is postmarked 1910. In fact, January 27th, 1910. So this is a real deal, an antique. In fact, it was... It was addressed to Miss Julia Greer in Arcadia, Ohio. No zip code, no house number, just Miss Julia Greer. Like some, it would just go to Arcadia and somebody would find her house and drop it off. So that's how you know. So you got all this stuff. So anyway, that's our giveaway. In order to enter the giveaway, you do not comment on this film, on this one. You comment on the crop vintage cross stitch page, the Facebook page, and you also comment on the cross stitch cover video, which is the video before this one. If you can, because not everybody can comment because they don't they don't have a uh, an account, but. But anyway, this is our giveaway, and as of tomorrow, this will be given to somebody who I hope will make it into a luscious and beautiful pink cushion. Let me get rid of this. Okay, let's go back. All right, so, more stuff to share. I liked some J.P. Coates stuff, I said, so I went out of my way to look for it and purchase J.P. Coates items. I found four different ones. This one looks like a little lunchbox. And it's pretty darn cool. When was it made? I have no idea. Probably 90s, 80s, something like that. Pretty cool. This one's even better. This is the J.P. Coates. Another sort of lunchbox thing. It's in the shape of a thread. That's cool, right? It's got a handle. Inside sort of just looks like a, a tin lined with some gold foil. And it's got pretty neat graphics. Um, I don't really find a date on this one. Oh, there is a date. 2007, actually. It wasn't that old. 
this is another JP Coats tin. Is there something in here? Oh, <laughs> just some wrapping. These must have been giveaways. I don't know. And then I found one that's even better, the best one yet. This is a, another JP Coats, but this is a caddy. And this one is, uh, is, has Clark's cotton on the sides. And then JP Coats with a, a child, with a dog. Beautiful. And I love these. These are so cool. These are great for just sticking your stuff in and scissors and actually toting around a project. This would fit an entire project. This one's the best one yet. So anyway, I think I'm done with the JP Coats because I got a whole bunch of them. But I had to share them with you. I know we're going from thing to thing, but I'm, as I find stuff on the table, I'm showing it to you. <laughs> Forgot to show you my finish. Now this is a vintage cross-stitch niche finish. It's Christmas Carols by Heinzeit. I already put this on my page, so some of you have seen it. And it, this is vintage trimming, lace trimming. It's got, what's neat about it is it's two-tone. It has that, that nice little red on it. Real vintage fabric in the back. Supposed vintage charms. I ordered them as old, but they don't look old. My cute vintage pillow. So that's done. What else? Yes. This caddy. This one's adorable. Uh, it looks handmade. It's made of, I think, pine. It's heavy. It's got a wrought iron handle. And this is really perfect for cross stitch supplies. And it is really old looking. I, I, I don't know how old it is, actually. But what, what I did see about it is it does have, you know, it looks like somebody made this. It's not dovetailed. It is glued, which tells me it's not an antique. But it, it, it's 20th century, okay? Could it be 70s, 60s, 80s? Who knows? But it is a very nice caddy. And so I saw this. I said, wow, that's useful. You ask, why do I have books? Well, I did, I did follow Shakespeare's peddler before she became Kitten Stitcher, and she had a blog. And on the blog, she did show books that she put on a shelf, and she actually cut out the inside and put a cross-stitch project. I can't cut the inside out it would like be cutting hmm. hold on i'm back just had dinner we uh i'm gonna say we my my stepdaughter's here she lives in massachusetts so her dad is working late and we just ordered mexican food so we just ate that i changed into a comfortable outfit and now we can finish so anyway I think we were talking about the, the books. So I used to watch uh, the Shakespeare's Peddler, not watch her, but read her blog, and she would have these books she cut open, and she would put a project inside. Well, I can never do that. But we can use the books. I'm thinking to somehow just use these books as, as beauty, as maybe to put something on the front. I got these at a thrift store, actually, and they're the comedies and tragedies of William Shakespeare, and they're a set of four. They were a dollar each, so they were four dollars for these four beautiful books. And 
I love the tragedies, of course. Let me see if I can find you some illustrations. This book, copyright 1944, printed in the United States of America. Let's look at Macbeth. So we can find, oh, that wouldn't have been, Macbeth is in, the, in number one. We can find some of my favorite passages. So let's go to Macbeth. And we can find our our, our Lady Macbeth and our witches. Let's see if I can, can find this. It says, Thrice the brinded cat hath mewed, thrice and once the hedge pick hedge pig whined. Harper cries, tis time, tis time. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble, fillet of fenny snake in the cauldron boil and bake, eye of newt and toe of frog, wool of bat and tongue of dog, adder's fork and blind worms sting, lizard's lead, leg and howlet sting. For a charm of powerful trouble, like a hell broth boil and bubble. Love it. Love Shakespeare. I just went to uh, Shakespeare's childhood home in uh, just outside of London, and I thought it was just amazing. Anyway, I know that was not cross stitch related, but I'm trying to find some of the illustrations in this book that I think are just so interesting and neat. I saw a witch's one that I really liked, but of course I can't find it now. Let's see. Can I find it? Now, of course, a good floss tuber would have done this in advance. But anyway, this is a uh, this is Lady Macbeth, and it says, "Yet who would have thought the old man to have so much blood in him?" So they're not really cross-stitch related, but they are. So I had to show you. Let's go on. A few more interesting things before I get to the linen, because I know the linen is the main event. This is a beautiful, I, got, I didn't get this at a thrift store. I got this at an antique, a little antique mall. There's a few of them around here. And this is just a really nice little, vintage tin. You can see how t it looks like tin. It's, it's a little distressed and it's silver. But a tin container that's got quite a few nice little motifs on it. This is a Christmas motif right there. So pretty. I got that. I found this beautiful fabric. This is vintage fabric that's unused meaning I didn't tear something apart to get it. I got this. This was all like one little bundle, so I just bought the whole thing. It's got gold and black. Very 70s looking, I guess you'd call this calico. Pretty nice. A nice, this is a very large, this has to be like maybe two yards worth of Nice, uh, I love you, I'm going to call that, fabric. Some nice butterflies. A another calico fabric. Really 70s. And then look at this fabric I found. It's got the pin cushion. It's got the scissors. Love it. That one, I'm sure I'll find no, I'll no problem using. I want to do the fabric, but one more thing. This. Have you guys seen these? Oh, two more things. This is made to hold the scissors. See it? These are made to hold the, the bobbins. 
These, I have no idea what they're made for, and I would like somebody to tell me because I don't know, but they're little containers in a beautiful drawer to hold whatnot. So it's a thread container, I guess. To me, what would you do with this that's cross-stitch related? Well, I'd probably remove these two pegs in the front. In fact, there's two in the back missing. I'd remove these pegs to the back and then take, take these out and then in the front put a cross-stitch. Or just use it as is, but I love the duck. This one I showed on my Facebook page. This is a really nice egg basket. It's a double egg basket. I got this also at that antique mall. It is not new. It is not antique. It is definitely vintage. It could be 20, 30, 40 years old. I don't know. Um, but it's extremely well made. It almost looks handmade. And what's neat about this is that you can put your scissors, whoop, where am I putting my scissors? You can put your scissors in the, in the area. You can put them in the middle, like that. You can put them on the sides if you can find a spot. <laughs> this is a big scissor, bigger scissor, so, but I know I found, there we go. You could put them like that, but I thought the middle part actually worked really well. You could probably put large scissors in there and put projects in here and floss and whatnot. But this actually was a very nice piece. I couldn't wait to buy this. I did negotiate this one because I was like, oh, I have to have this. Have to have it. But this I really like. On to the linen. But before that, um, I am going to show you one, one floss that I did receive. I did buy this at the cross stitch cupboard. This is, once again, the painter's threads. It's beautiful. Um, I want you just to see the name of the, the site. It is absolutely beautiful, beautiful floss that's got a shine to it. It comes in different colors. I have a green one, which I, I actually I opened and used. The green one is used on this pillow project, but you, I didn't use very much. You can barely see it. It's actually the little green in between is, is this green thread. I wanted to try it. It's not hard to work with. This separates into a lot of individual threads and it's beautiful. Painter's Threads Collection. Nice, it's the only thread. So, here we have it. I'm just gonna lift this up. There's thread there, we don't need to show you thread. Linen, now you're gonna see this stuff, pretty nice. So first I'm going to show you what I got from the cross stitch cupboard. I looked through their linen to find very beautiful stuff that's hidden in there. And what did I find? R&R Productions Yellow Submarine. It's an odd shaped piece, you're right, but it it's actually measures 24 by 16, it's a pretty big piece. And that's not including this little extra, this little extra thing. So this is called Yellow Submarine by r, r Reproductions. Lord knows when this was made, what it was made for. If this is 28 count, you'll never see it again. I had to have it. <laughs> I had to have it because I said, if I don't buy this, I will never see this again. And one day I'll hear about it and say, wow, I wonder what that looks like. Also, I thought I could put it on a video and show you, but it's a beautiful yellow. It's a, if I have to describe this yellow, a sunny yellow. 
but not the typical R and R that's made now because most of it is very uh, prim. I also got a large piece of this is actually 18 by 25 of maritime white. This was not cheap, but even at the cross stitch covered, which is very fair prices, because I, I I only had a small piece of it. I wanted a big piece. Maritime white is not white. It's it's lakeside linens, and it's sort of a I can't explain it. A creamy white. This is white. Just to show you, this is just a piece of a free chart I got, but that's white. This is maritime white. It's a creamy white and it's a beautiful color and it's got a little subtle variegation to it. You probably can't appreciate how nice it is, but when I saw it, I was like, you know, I don't know how long that's gonna be made or whatever, I have to have it. And the third thing I got was called Metal Rue, Vintage Metal Rue from Lakeside Linens. They had a nice piece of it. It's a quarter yard, it wasn't too expensive, and I love the color of this. This is one of my favorite colors. Perfect, boxy, look. Perfect for any sampler that you can imagine. But this is Vintage Metal Rue by Lakeside Linens. It smells so good, it looks good. Wasn't, it was very fairly priced, and once again, it was at the cross-stitch cupboard. They don't have a lot left of uh, Lakeside. I'm not sure what's going on with Lakeside. Rumor has it, at least from people at the cross-stitch cupboard, that they're, they're going to be making linen again. I hope so, because It's uh, a little out of control. There's not much linen left. All right, before I show you all this, let's show you some Kaniki's linen that I bought. Kaniki's is not out of business, but she's not in business. She is sort of, there's some medical issues and other issues going on. So she, she sold, she sells some stuff sporadically. Her cross-stitch store is open. They're all downloads right now, so hard charts are hard to get. Um, and her linen is impossible to get because she's not making it right now. She might be making it in the future. She had a sale on her Facebook page, and Roxy, stop. And I bought a few things because I said, I have to have this, I don't have it. and. Her stuff is so lovely. First thing I'm going to show you is Kaniki's. This is 30 to 32 count uneven European linen. I don't know what this is. It's not white, as you can see. It's a creamy color. It looks like stuff that an old sampler would be would be stitched on. I've never seen this sold before. I may not see it sold again. It's not Osnaburg. Osnaburg, I think that's the way it's pronounced, which is more of a muslin type material. But it's 30 to 32 count European linen. I thought it was neat. This one is Kaniki's We the People. some of her printed linen. Here you go. The Constitution. Awfully nice. We the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect union, if you can remember your schoolhouse rock. Establish and just, establish justice ensure domestic tranquility, abide by the common defense. I just remember my schoolhouse rock anyway. Nice. So that's We the People. Like I said, I bought a few of these. This one's especially lovely. This one is called 32 Count, it's 32 Count Fall Leaves. Again, a printed linen. 
It's beautiful. I'll never see it again, maybe, unless she starts making it again, but it's very nice. Oh, Hand-painted snowy mountain. I don't know why I bought two pieces of this, other than she had two pieces for sale. I'll show you the small one. This is a small one. I guess she painted this, I don't know. But this is painted Rocky Mountain linen. I like the snowflake. And then there's a big one. A really big one. like the other side. I really do almost like this side. It's much more subtle. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I asked her for a pattern that went with it. She said she didn't have one. But how could I resist this? Hand-painted snowy mountains uh, scene, a fat quarter. The other one was a small piece. And then I bought one of her hard hard copy charts because they just don't exist anymore. Pumpkins and vines candle mat. Cross stitch pattern with bonus chart included. I don't know what the bonus chart is. I didn't look at it. But I really like the candle mat. I think this is probably better. That's neat to put a candle. That's, that's really nice and it's very prim. Let me see what the bonus chart is. Oh, wow. She had a beautiful picture in here. I didn't even notice, so I didn't open it. Here you go. Here's your candle mat. It's lovely. But what's the bonus chart? This chart's huge. <laughs> it's, got, it's like on the multiple pages for that one chart, and it's just very, very big. I don't know why. I don't see a bonus chart. Hmm. Doesn't matter. It's really pretty. This one I want to make. And I don't know what I want to make it on. Pretty neat. Oh, one more piece that I bought at the cross stitch cupboard. Um, this was the last piece they had also of Lakeside Linen's Charcoal, 32 count. I've never seen this. Uh, I'm sure other people have, but the, the issue is this doesn't look like charcoal with me. It almost looks like blues and greens, but it is so pretty. Lakeside Linen's Charcoal. I always like to show this in different angles so you can see the fabric. Like side is just a beautiful, beautiful fabric. And now this pile. Let me show you what I got. Because I found more E-Designs linen, which is my favorite linen. Again, lucky to find this. I have not looked through this pile. I'm looking through this pile with you. We've got herbal tea. One at a time, we're going to go through this because I haven't seen these either. It's breathtaking linen, painted linen, just beautiful. I wish it came in bigger pieces though. This one's called herbal tea. And when I look at it, it looks like herbal tea. <laughs> That's what I love about these. This one's called coffee with milk. Coffee with milk. I don't know if this one looks like coffee with milk. A little bit. Coffee with milk. I haven't seen these. This one is called I'm Not a Witch. I'm not a witch. Let's see if we can. Wow. 
like a witchy linen to me, but it says, I'm not a witch. That is a beautiful color. Wow. I can't even describe it. This person, who I don't know, is so talented. This one's called Valentine's Day, 1877. A vintage Valentine's Day, for sure. Valentine's Day, 1877. What's not to like? Wow. I'm very gung-ho and passionate about this linen. It's because I love it. <laughs> it's so beautiful. And it shows. This one is called The Witch's Kitchen. Lovely. The Witch's Kitchen. I'm trying to fold these up carefully because I have lost. Sometimes I open them and then I lose the tag and I don't know what I have. This one is called Laura Ingalls Wilder. Oh, love Little House on the Prairie. Laura Ingalls Wilder. Looks like one of her dresses after she had a fight with Nellie. It's so pretty. I can't, I can't tell you how pretty these are on a video because you probably have to see them by yourself. I've sold a bunch of these too. This one's called Sarah Good, 1692. Sarah Good, 1692. Very neutral and really pretty. And it smells good too. Let's see if I can fold this properly. Um, this one is called Pierre de Ronsard, Ronsard Rose. Oh, nice. I'm trying to show you different angles and open it. And you think it's busy, right? But it's not. Any spring fabric. Any spring uh, pattern will look beautiful on this. Do I have any more? Hold on, let's see, because I have some others in here too. This one is called Antique Book, and this does look like an antique book. Very subtle and very beautiful. antique book. This one looks definitely like an antique book. I'm so thrilled to have been able to get the, buy these. I was beyond thrilled. This one is called Rose Hips. And it is a red, it's really red. Rose Hips. Christmas or Valentine's, probably Christmas for this one. And Vintage Rose. Of course, it looks like Vintage Rose. One more. Let 
This one's called Witch Saturday, Witch, W-I-T-C-H. Most inky, beautiful. Witch Saturday. Oh. Let's gawk at these. I can look at these and feel them. It's all 32 count. I've never seen this linen in anything but 32 count. Uh, the consistency of the linen is it's very much like Extrude Designs. I, you almost feel like they get it from the same place. Uh, it's very uh, just nice linen. Not just beautiful. I have one more piece from Garibaldi's Needleworks. I've never, ever owned a piece of Garibaldi's Needlework linen. It says this is Ariosa. This is not even linen. It's 37% uh, rayon and 63% cotton. I don't know why I bought this. It's 22 count. I like 22 count for pillows and things. I think it looks beautiful. And when I saw this, I said it just, the color is so pretty. That is a beautiful color. So it's this 22 count Ariosa. If you, if you told me this is linen, I would believe you because it's almost, it, it's not perfect, but it's rayon cotton. And I've never quite seen it. it, it it's so, it's very, very nice. And I would love to do something on this. Uh, given the fact it's only 22 count, it looks like it's more count than 22 count, but it is only 22. I would probably do this with three, three over two, and do some sort of, um, like I said, a pillow. Sort of like the, uh, those thicker, those thicker, uh, thicker linens for pillow with uh, more, uh, bigger holes and just a nicer thing. I can't believe I think that's it. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you for watching and thank you for being such uh, really nice people that have viewed my videos and have joined uh, the Facebook page, the Vintage, Vintage Cross Stitch Facebook page. Uh, we're up around 570 members there right now and uh, I've tried to show people that you can take common items, old items, throwaway items, and elevate them and change them and make things that look very prim, that are the real deal, that aren't reproductions like people have been using for a long time to make things look prim. So, that was my idea a few months ago, and it's my idea today. So I am very happy to, to be making this. Anyway, have a great evening, and from my home to yours, keep stitching.